India is over the moon, quite literally. It's uh, been only a few days after India landed its lunar mission on the southern pole of the moon, Chandrayaan-3. Now, preparations are on at the Indian Space Research Organization to launch India's first space-based Indian observatory to study the sun, namely Aditya L1. The solar mission will be launched at uh, the Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sri Harikota on the 2nd of September. ISRO has said that uh, Aditya L1 will be placed in a halo orbit around the Langrange point of the Sun-Earth system, which is about 1.5 million kilometers from the Earth. We will have the advantage of observing solar activities in real time. Uh, made with a budget of about 300 crore rupees, there is a lot at stake for India's solar mission. India's solar mission will be crucial as it adds to the pre-existing knowledge of solar events, which is the key to understanding space, weather and much more. It remains important to note that solar weather and environment affect the weather of the entire system, while India is reveling in the glory of a phenomenal moon landing. Mind you, at the Southern Pole, it remains to be seen what lies ahead in our space journey as ISRO prepares for this very special mission. Joining us on the broadcast, Mr. K. Siddharth, who is an Earth scientist. He's with us on the show. Mr. Siddharth, thank you so much for speaking with us. Thank you for joining us on the broadcast. Aditya L1, unlike Chandrayaan-3, something like this has already been attempted by many countries, including including NASA, but what makes this mission so special for India? This mission comes at a time when India is taking a big space leap. Now we have a series of events planned. We have a series of satellite placings planned. We want to be space power. We want to control the astropolitics, that is space politics or cosmopolitics. Also wanted that when we send our next day missions, eh, we, we go to face a eh, minimum amount of a deterrence as far as nature is concerned, physics is concerned, as far as sun is concerned, as far as any, any disaster is going to be concerned. Eh. We also want eh, that eh, we must go on to study a lot of things eh, about which eh, we are not informed properly by the international agencies eh, that affects our weather eh, and eh, so on. So what we did was we planned eh, a mission eh, that will go on to go just 1.5 million kilometers above the Earth, eh, not close to the sun, because eh, it is one tenth eh, of eh, the distance that is going to be sun. And eh, our aim here eh, is eh, to take eh, a lot of eh, payloads. Eh. These payloads eh, will be helpful to us eh, in eh, the understanding of the solar flares. Now, solar flares are significant eh, because they affect the magnetic storms on the Earth. These magnetic storms eh, may affect, eh, why is it that Tibet is going to be getting heated more? They may go to affect eh, the location of the jet stream. And mind it, eh, it was the location of the jet stream this time, eh, which was largely responsible for eh, the movement of the monsoonal truck. And movement of the monsoonal truck was eh, the basic cause eh, behind so much amount of rain in Himachal Pradesh. So the extraterrestrial weather, the space weather, may go on to affect the Earth, eh, and that is going to be one point of our study. Of course, eh, our study is going to be also confined onto the study of the sunspots. Eh. Now, these sunspots are eh, essentially lighter spots on the surface of the sun. Eh. They are eh, relatively cooler spots on the surface of the sun, eh, and eh, Sunspots right. basically mean you know, that the magnetic storm emanating from the sun is right. not going to be very, very high. These right. are some of the phases. Accordingly, accordingly, our weather will also go to get affected. The magnetic storm will be affected. The auroral display will be affected. Now, supposing uh, tomorrow we happen to go to Australia or to, we go on to go to Antarctic for that matter, right. we will require our own observatory will require our own study and uh, these are some of the things that will go to help us. Uh. So without them, a lot of scientific experiments that we are going to be carrying, uh, we won't be able to carry out uh, so freely in the whole outer space. Uh. And that is the basic reason uh, that uh, we are concerned of uh, the heating of the corona, that is uh, the outermost atmosphere of the sun, the winds that are emanating, which affects uh, the magnetic storm on the Earth. And these magnetic storms right. affect uh, radio disruption, T 
TV right. disruption, right. weather conditions, right. and what not. Absolutely, absolutely. So, after Chandrayaan 3, there are a lot of hopes from ISRO. And there is a renewed sense of enthusiasm with which the entire world is looking at ISRO. As I said earlier, Aditya L1 or missions of this nature have been attempted earlier by other organizations as well. But with our own frugal designs and with our own innovative approach, is there something new that this mission has to offer to the scientist community, to the space science? The new part essentially is going to be in the form of the payload set. Yeah. Now, a good number of countries that are going to these places, they do study some of the things. For example, everyone by and large has studied the origin of the magnetic storms emanating from the surface of the sun. Everyone has studied it. But we want to go a, a, a bit deeper in this case. So, so much so that, see, I just want to let you know why is it that this study will be significant. As the sun emits this radiation, this radiation comes to the Earth in form of alpha rays, beta rays, gamma rays, then X rays, then ultraviolet rays. Now, Earth's atmosphere goes on to filter a lot of things. For example, okay. the magnetosphere is able to filter the gamma rays, alpha rays, and and the beta rays in a sense. Right. right. Now, assuming that if these rays are going to be coming onto the Earth, then yeah. there will be no life. Absolutely. Without magnetosphere, there will be no life. So this is going to be affecting uh, those components uh, emanating from the sun that will go to affect, uh, that will go to study one layer of our atmosphere, and that is magnetosphere. Magnetosphere. So this is one yeah. component of it. The, the very important sphere that we must uh, understand, as the learned scientist is pointing out. Mr. K. Siddharth, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for joining us on the broadcast and explaining what exactly Aditya L1 has to offer. Now, my colleague Ritu is, uh, uh, was there at ISRO. She spoke to a lot of scientists. And here is a lowdown on what to expect from this mission and how high the hopes really are. After the successful soft landing of the Chandrayaan-3 on the south pole of the moon, the Indian Space Research Organization will be now studying the sun. So yes, after moon, it is sun. The Indian Space Research Organization has now officially announced the date of the Aditya L1 launch. So the ISRO has said that the Aditya L1 mission will be launched from Sri Harikota on 2nd of September. Remember the ISRO chairman S. Somna just couple of days back when the Chandrayaan-3 had the soft landing on the moon's surface. He said that the satellite has already reached the Sri Harikota and that's the place from where uh, the launch will actually take place uh, of the Aditya L1 as well. So why is is Aditya L1 very important for the India? So the Aditya L1, of course, is the first uh, space of, of, of the India to actually study the sun. So through Aditya L1, the ISRO will be studying the outermost layer of uh, uh, the sun. And moreover, uh, the main objective of the Aditya L1 is also uh, to understand the solar activities, moreover, the corona of the uh, sun as well. So the Aditya L1, the satellite, will actually travel uh, from Sri Harikota, it will almost have 1.5 million kilometer of journey uh, before it gets uh, gets into the designated position of the halo orbit uh, around the L1 of a solar and earth system. So yes, that's the important mission that the India has taken it up, though the many countries would have uh, done, it, uh, done it earlier as well. But the, for the India, it is first of its kind and the India is really looking forward to understand the solar's out outermost layer in depth there again because uh, what we are also given to understand is that the Aditya L1 will uh, carry almost seven special payloads through which it will do in-depth uh, study as well uh, to understand the space weather uh, in the real time and also the solar wind as well insignificantly. So that will be the significant study that will be carried by the Aditya L1 and mainly through the seven payloads that are actually being uh, uh, on uh, will be on this Aditya L1 will be studying the photosphere, the chronosphere and uh, also 
uh, the corona of the sun as well so this is an important mission that the india is right now speaking about but again this time uh, all the fingers crossed because now the the isro is very confident saying that this mission of course will be successful as well because they are again very confident about it but what is more important as well the all the crucial elements that the isro wants to look forward to and also study as well so that is really going to be important because right after the success uh, the successful soft landing of the chandrayaan 3 the india is all now geared up to see what exactly the information is going to come out with this significant study that will be carried by the isro to understand the uh, sun's outermost uh, layer there again so through aditya l1 uh, will actually help uh, to observe the sun directly that's of course very important and clearly as well and then go and study all the solar activities